We're joined right now on RailerCulture.com by Robert Irwin. He is the managing editor with Better Farming. Welcome today, Robert. Hi. Thanks, Sean. Robert, uh, Better Farming has always been kind of the, uh, I guess, the go-to go-to information source for this pigeon king uh, fraud situation. Uh, Arian Gabrith was, uh, I guess, charged last week. He was let out on bail. Uh, what, what's the update on the situation? Well. First of all, we, we should be really careful here, uh, Sean. Um, he's been uh, charged with fraud, but of course, none of this has been proven in court. Um, there, as I understand it, there's one charge of fraud in connection with the uh, pigeon business uh, directly, and four counts of bankruptcy violations. Okay. And. As I understand it now, the uh, there's a uh, uh, an appearance date has been set for uh, late in January. So I, I guess you know we've obviously seen this story uh, played out uh, even on 60 Minutes. They they did a feature on it. Is, is this kind of yeah? Like- it was it was well well covered in the media. Um, W5 did a piece here in Canada in 60 Minutes. Uh, we worked with. Uh, both of those organizations uh, to uh, provide some background. So, so what do you what do you think is going to happen here? Obviously, a lot of people have uh, they were kind of uh, you know put money into the the pigeon king business and were putting up barns or converting uh, hog barns into pigeon uh, barns. You know, is this is this going to be an open and shut case? Do you think? Um, I, I would say far from it. Uh, there, there are uh, uh, well, as as you've probably heard. I mean, there are probably a thousand different stories. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, each each one just slightly different, with some some common ground in there. Okay. Uh, so we'll have to uh, certainly have to wait uh, on the uh, the bankruptcy uh, charges. I really don't have any knowledge of. This is something that's come later, you know, after the fact. Okay. So uh, as far as the pigeon. Uh, problems go uh, we'll have to just wait and see how which which uh, cases or which situations the crown has focused on so I, I guess what are some of the the things that make this not a open and shut case Robert um, I guess what would make it an, a, not an open and shut case is is like in any situations I mean there are two sides we have, uh, you know, the people who feel that they've been uh, cheated, uh, deceived, and we have Arlen Gelbreth's explanation for each situation. And we'll have to wait and see how a judge or a judge and jury uh, view this. Okay. So h- how much money are, are people claiming? Like, what is the total number in terms of money that uh, people feel has been lost? Depends on how you calculate the losses. People uh, bought into the business at, at, at different levels with different expectations of a return. If you took all of the expected returns, in other words, if you bought a pair of pigeons for $500 and, and then expected to get uh, your money, you know, Get get large sums of money back as as your agreement might have stated. Uh, if you took all of those together, we're probably you know looking at tens of millions of dollars, thirty million uh, and counting, uh, probably probably a lot more. Um, if you took a look at just the money that people invested, it would be less and. Uh, uh, it's been a while since I looked at the financial records. We did obtain all, all of the, the records for the company, and it's been a while since I, I reviewed them, so I, I, I hesitate to throw a number out. But, but that was the basis for the trustees' calculations. They took the money that you invested, the money you received back by way of having your offspring purchased, and whatever the difference was was what the trustee concluded the bankruptcy owed the investors. So the bank, the trustee never, never really looked at repaying the the, the returns that the contracts promised. Hmm. So you you done a lot of research on uh, Mr. Galbraith. Do you, is is he the same kind of guy we've seen in a lot of these situations where he was a real trusted individual? 
um, really respecting the community and, and people just kind of gave, you know, invested a lot of money on some, some good faith or how, how did, how did this kind of go down? Um, I, I've never met Arlen face to face. I have spoken with him on the phone and certainly watched all of the, uh, the video uh, clips that have been shot and, uh, and then, and then, you know, read, read over the, uh, the various uh, recordings that reporters have, have made of their, uh, uh, interviews with him. Uh, my conclusion, and it's just a personal one, is that a very, uh, very charismatic individual. Um, uh, he, the people that were most attracted to him were people of faith, uh, people that uh, are willing to, uh, you know, sometimes suspend disbelief, and uh, and and in some cases, uh, you know, people that were just. Uh, uh, maybe sometimes more trusting than the average, and, and that's where the where, where you feel some uh, sympathy. Uh, I'm sure there were some who saw this as an opportunity to uh, make money uh, quickly, um, and and may have had their doubts, but thought they could get in and get out before it collapsed. But I've personally spoken with a number of people who took this on good faith. Yeah. And we're simply looking for a way to stay on their farms, improve things for their families. Do, and do, and that's where I think the, the, the great tragedy is, no matter how things play out in court. Do you know how many farmers were, were, were invested? Poli- police say there were a thousand, they say they conducted a thousand interviews, and that would be something... Uh, like the number we believe were invested, yeah. Well, okay, so uh, what is the next step in the Robert? What, do you, do we have any idea when this is potentially going to go to to trial? Well, in Ontario, uh, trial dates are established uh, well ahead of time. There will be an appearance, uh, you know, as I said earlier, towards the end of January, and at that time they could set a trial date or there could be some agreement to postpone it for another appearance and uh, and then have a, a trial date established then. And, of course, throughout the whole procedure, there is always the opportunity for settlement. And that's how uh, probably the vast majority of these things are resolved. Okay. Okay, Robert, well, thanks a lot for uh, shedding some light on this topic. And uh, I'm sure that as uh, uh, this kind of story continues to unfold we'll uh, we'll speak again my pleasure thanks for calling